You're listening to another life-transforming message from Awakened Church with campuses in San Diego and Salt Lake City. To find out more about us, go to awakenchurch.com. All right. Well, um, so how many of you set new goals this year? Anybody set goals? Okay. I like to set realistic goals for my life. <clears throat> and uh, so the title of my message today is Be Human. How many of you think we can reach that goal today? <clears throat> Come on. That's what I'm talking about. I want to set things that we can reach. Come on. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off with uh, reading this scripture, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 through 27. And it says, this is what God says, Let us make human beings in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over. And uh, I'm going to just paraphrase the rest of that. Rule over all the animals. Okay? So what this scripture is saying is that we, as human beings, were meant to rule over animals. So in verse 27, it says, So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Can somebody say, we were cre- that, That's too long. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Just say image of, God. image of God. That's what it was supposed to mean to be human. So uh, Andre Johnson was around here somewhere. Is he probably running around? He is one of the smartest guys I know. Um, how, how, my, my 14-year-old, I guess she's 13, and I'm getting all confused. <clears throat> Don't you know who I am? No. Uh, No, my 13-year-old showed me this YouTube video, and it was a guy who, he likes to ponder deep things. And in fact, he gets so excited about ideas that he says sometimes he stays up all night long thinking about ideas. And so I got to thinking, man, I want to ponder some ideas. And uh, recently, my wife of 22 years... Come on. She bought an Instapot from Allie Cullen at William and Sonoma. And uh, it's, not only, it's not just any Instapot. It is a Chewbacca Instapot. I love that thing. And so she's been cooking with it. And uh, so we've been reading the instructions. And it cooks food four times faster. And so I was like, I'm gonna, I want to ponder that. How, how is that possible? You know? How is it possible? And... Uh, So, of course, I I watched a YouTube video, right? And and there's a guy doing formulas, talking about atmospheric pressure, and when you raise the atmospheric pressure, the heat transfer, and about this point, my brain started to heat up, and I was like, oh, I got to stop that, right? That's enough (laughs) pondering. I just trust it. It's cooking the food, and it's good. But lately, I've been pondering what makes us human, What makes us human? And uh, I've been spending a lot of time with the one family member that is not human. We have three boys and three girls in our house, and one of them is not human. And and I'm not talking about my wife. This is a relationship series. My wife is angelic. Come on. But she is human. Human. Can we, can we just have a moment of profound silence and gratitude for the men and women in this room that are still attracted to personality? Come on. Man, I just, I love my wife. You know, uh, I, started bald, I started going bald when I was 19 years old. Man, we, we, we met on the internet before there were profile pictures. Right? And so we got to talking before she saw me. And let me tell you, that helped out a lot. Come on. That helped out a lot. I love you, babe. And, uh, and the non-human I'm talking about is not one of my kids. Although there are times when I have walked out of a bedroom and I've tried to think, what is going on in here? You know, like, what has happened? If we did an archaeological dig, what would they discover? 
But I got to confess, I, I was kind of a slob growing up too. And my mom did everything for me. My mom and dad were here in the last service. And uh, my dad told me he was proud of me. That's pretty cool. One last shot. No, <laughs> no but, I, but I, I was kind of a messy kid. And, and I remember when it all changed, though. The moment that it changed for me, I was about 17 years old. And I got invited to a, 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 a party, but I called it a barbecue. <clears throat> and uh, so I went over to these four guys' house. So four single dudes in a house. And I walked into that house and I took a look around and I went home and I repented to my mom. And I learned how to use a vacuum cleaner and organize because God help me, I just wanted to be a human. And that place was a disaster. All right, well, who am I talking about? I'm talking about my dog, Toby. I've been spending a lot of time with my dog, Toby. And so uh, we've been hiking together and we've been doing a lot of stuff. And so I've been, I've been thinking about what makes us different than the animals. And uh, I don't know if you've ever gone on a long hike with a dog, but after a couple of miles, I'm thinking, why are you still trying to pee? Man, you got nothing left in the tank, man. Everything he smells, he's like air peeing. I'm like, what, what are you doing? Because animals can only operate on instinct. So you smell and you do. You, you just operate on instinct. But the scripture says that we are different than animals. So, so what is it about us that makes us different? And so I began to think about it and, and, and ponder it uh, to the depth that I can do. Um, and, and the term is imago Dei which means that we were created in the image of God. If you were around at the Bible times and you went to uh, Babylon or, or you went to um, the Philistines or if you went to uh, Egyptian, you know, Egypt, I may forget how I talk. I'm, I'm just becoming human. Um, no, but, but if you had gone there, you would have immediately known who their gods were because they would have had images all over the place. You would have seen statues of their gods. And you wanna know something interesting? Most of the images would have been of animals. But God forbid the children of Israel from making idols or any graven image. So if you had walked into the, the, the camp of the children of Israel, you would have been like, who is their God? You'd have been looking around. How, who, because God made you and me to be the representative of God in the earth. To be a human being was we were called to be the representation of God. So I started thinking about the differences and one of the things is that humans can act like animals. Have you ever seen a, dude, that dude's an animal, right? Have you, right? People can act like animals, but animals can't act like people. There may be a trait, but they're not going to act. Have you ever seen uh, a, a, an animal with a tool? Right? You don't go to the Home Depot of tools created by animals. And so and humans are unique in that they can live from an internal motivation. They can... Uh, have a thought, an imagination, a creative spark, and something on the inside will trigger them and they can change themselves. That's what makes us human, right? The ability to think. And I, I realized I left something out for you guys, but if you leave this message today and you discover that you are capable of making a change in your relationship, then I have been a success. Because no matter where you are, we as human beings are capable of changing our situation. And then I'm gonna tell you two things that we can do to make things better. So Toby has never one time come up to me and says, you know, Sam, I, I watched a YouTube video <laughs> and I am going to go on a behavior improvement program. I am committing to the next six weeks that I'm going to greet strangers with calm and restraint. 
No, my dog has never said that. If you come to our house, my dog will greet you. My dog loves people more than people love him. And uh, he, he's an amazing dog, but he's a dog. And he has never one time been sparked to make a change in his life. You know, I've been hiking with him more, um, trying to reach my goal weight. Got a few more pounds to go. <clears throat> As you can, come on, it's supposed to be funny. Come on, it's funny. You guys are all feeling sad for me. Come on. I just gotta gain a few more pounds and I'll hit it. Come on. No, but, but after all this hiking, Toby's got himself all matted up. And so I decided I was going to uh, groom him. And uh, so I watched a YouTube video, how to groom a schnauzer. And uh, so here I was, three and a half hours, you know, and, and, and doing, and do you know, he didn't help me one bit. He's an animal. All right. But humans, Mitch, one Instagram post, a human can change their workout routine. You can get inspired by one thing. You can watch a YouTube video, <clears throat> I'm saying that a lot. You can watch a YouTube video and learn how to smoke a brisket. Come on, Chris, learn how to smoke a brisket. You can watch a documentary on Netflix and decide to give up smoking brisket because you're gonna be a plant-based vegan. <laughs> Got any game changers in the house, come on. But the point I'm trying to make is that human beings can change themselves. We have the ability to be inspired by something, a word, an idea, a thought. And this is good news for relationships. I don't know if you ever heard this, but people often refer to relationships, I'm stuck in a relationship. Well, if you're stuck in a relationship, it means you're not acting human. But here's the deal. Not all thoughts, not all ideas are good ideas. I have watched some things be said in my office that I guarantee people <laughs> wish they had never had that idea. There are some things you shouldn't do in your marriage. They are bad ideas. It's like the blind following the blind sometimes. Can I tell you one of my favorite stories? There was uh, two Aussie sailors and they uh, pulled into a London port and uh, they did what Aussie sailors do. They went to a pub and they got smashed. And when they came out of this pub, the London fog had set in and they were like, man, we have no idea where we are. We're completely lost. And so they're like, where are we? And they, they see this guy coming up out of the fog and, and he's a full British Admiral wearing his uniform with all of his ribbons and medals. And these guys are like, hey man, you, you know where we are? And this guy's like, do you have any idea who I am? At this point, one guy punches the other and goes, man, we're really messed up now. We don't know where we are, and he doesn't know who he is. <laughs> so make sure you're following people in your life who know who they are, and they know where they're going. Come on. So be a human. All right. So here's the deal. With Without thought and intention, so now I'm gonna shift gears and go into the two things I think every relationship needs to know and to avoid, and this is research-based. <clears throat> um, and that is, uh, that as I turn a corner here, trying to make that corner here. All right, many people in their relationships act like animals. They're just operating on instinct, okay? And so, uh, one of the first things that we do a lot of is we criticize. And so it is one of the instant things that we do. We have a particular ability to see the faults in someone else. Can someone say amen? How we were driving here this morning and I told Gary, that guy is struggling. 
It was a driver. It's, it's okay. <laughs> it happens. Uh, you, you observe things, right? You observe things in other people. It's just like we're, we're, we just know what to do. But did you know that criticism, which is basically blame, it's accusation, it's judgment, right? That's a devilish characteristic. In Revelation chapter 12, it says that the devil is described as the accuser of the brother, brothers and sisters, if you've been in church a while, that's what we used to call people, brothers and sisters. But that's what the devil, right? He, he, uh, he was the accuser, of, and he does this day and night. So here's the thing. When we in our relationships criticize our spouses, or we criticize uh, our employees or our bosses or our children, we take on the role of the devil in their life. How many of you ever uh, been in a conversation and, and it just all of a sudden went into a fight? Just, phew, and it just went off to the races, you know, just whoosh, like what happened? You know, what I would say is usually what's happened is a criticism, a judgment or a blame statement was made in that moment. So let me read you a scripture, Matthew chapter seven. These are the words of Jesus. And it says, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. So if you've ever been in a situation where things were just getting dished back and forth, I think we may be falling into this, okay? Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in someone else's eye and pay no attention to the plank or railroad tie in your own eye? Like this is a bit of an, this is a big deal, right? There's something wrong with our perspective. How can you say, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from the other person's eye. And I wanna read one more verse that I don't think hardly ever gets read. It's the very next verse. It says, do not give dogs what is sacred. And, and let me just, I, I wanna, do not give people who are acting like animals what is sacred. And do not throw your pearls to people who are acting like animals. Because if you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Can I just say, people usually don't like to be criticized. Especially if they're behaving like an animal. <laughs> so what's the difference? Whoops. What's the difference between judgment and discernment? Okay. So we're not supposed to judge, but a spiritual gift is discernment. And here's what I would tell you. Judgment is me looking at you. Me starting my sentence. You know, I've been paying attention to you, Jack Hartman. And, and I just want to point out a few things that I think would help you, right? That's me looking at someone else and judging them. But discernment may be, hey, this is what's going on for me. This is what I'm feeling. This is how I have experienced our relationship. So when I focus on the inside of myself, there is an amazing amount of information that is going on on the inside of you. Can someone say, we're human? We're human. And so when we get in touch with what's going on on the inside, there's amazing information there. But then what that verse says is we need to have consent. Consent before we share those amazing insights. Just because you have amazing insights about someone else, you probably need to deal with the plank in your own eye before you start dishing and being the tweezer man for somebody else, right? <laughs> so I... I wanna just take a moment and give you some samples of criticism. You, uh, you didn't do this, you, you forgot this. Uh, 
And, and here's one that I, I find is that a lot of people have, uh, they, they, they give each other, and I got to be careful, but they, they give each other kind of chocolate covered poop, right? <laughs> you know, they, 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 they wrap something up and then they just like hand it to them and you're thinking, oh, this is good. And then what? And so they ask questions like, why did you do that? Which the obvious explanation is, if you were a rational human being, evidently you wouldn't have done. And so they are judging by asking questions. Okay, who does that kind of thing? Are you crazy? You are so immature. Here's one of my favorites. Act like a man. And can I tell you, to the response to act like a man, I have never seen anyone act more human. In fact, most act very much like an animal. That's ridiculous. Come on. <laughs> You're lazy. You don't take initiative. You're never here. You're just like your father. Man, if I think we, we, we did that like once in the 22 years we've been married, where we called each other by our parents' first name. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. All right. You never listen to me. You're always critical. You're so negative. You're bad with money. You look like a whatever. You're judging me. But can you understand that criticism changes the atmosphere and it turns it into negative? So here it is, the opportunity that we've been given as human beings, as creative human beings, we can speak life into situations, but instead, often we send criticism. All right. So here's just a point I want to make is that criticism sometimes works. Sometimes it seems to work. I've watched, you know, couples and people and they just really criticize one another and it stops a behavior. But can I tell you, you're setting yourself up for a relationship like an animal. Because instead of a person coming to an internal conclusion, I need to change myself, they're responding to external cues. And if you set your relationship up that they'll only call you back if you criticize them for not calling you back, you're missing the point. You need to have a relationship that's reciprocal, someone who is deciding to call on their own. So, uh, once we did an experiment or, or did a little thing with couples and we, 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 we blindfolded them and we had them communicate from their hearts. Because frequently what happens is we're using a lot of our eyes and we're reading how we think a person is going to take something before we speak from our heart. So first, the idea of share your own story, avoiding criticism, is the discernment is take a look inside. What is going on? How is this situation affecting me? And then how can I communicate it? By asking, is this okay? Can I share? And, and here's what I would tell you, is that if a person says no, don't share. <laughs> right? Come on, that's deep right there. That's, that's deep. That, that'll heat up your brain. But if you ask for permission, hey, can I share something? They say no, respect that. What we can do is we can pray for that person. Did you know that God can change the hearts of presidents and kings and anyone that we don't have access to? Because God can speak through a thought, through a word. It doesn't take external things to change people. What we need is a revival of people listening to God on the inside. So the Bible says that a word fitly spoken are like apples of gold in pictures of silver. It is an appropriate thing. When you find a person who is willing to hear, it's an amazing thing. All right. So the Holy Spirit is a much better teacher than you or I could ever be to our spouse. Can someone say amen? <clears throat> All right.
I'm going to move to my next point. And this one is defensiveness. So when people get in an environment of criticism, what often comes back in that kind of animalistic, instinctual thing is defensiveness. And there are four ways that I see defensiveness. The first is they just deny it. Nope, I didn't do that. You're wrong, you know. End of conversation. We're done here, you know. Like, so somebody is bringing something up and then the other person just gets shut down. I kind of call this the windshield wiper method. Man, nothing's sticking. Just swatting it all off. Come on. And the next, the next style of defensiveness is what I call the attack back. So basically, it's like, ho, 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 Samuel, before you get started criticizing me, I, let me get my list of things that I want to tell you, right? So we, we don't ever let the person even begin to talk because we're going to share with them all the things we've been storing up for them, including the kitchen sink. Man, I'm going to pull it all out right now. And do you know, I've seen people that are still upset with things that happened at their wedding. Come on. And so it's like, are you really going to bring that up? Because I got this thing you can't answer, right? You have no answer to this thing. So you just might as well go away, go away. And, and, and so instead of us having a dialogue, we just keep throwing things back. And do you know, you can only solve one issue at a time. So if one person brings something up and the other person brings something up, you're done. They cancel each other out. Because I'm never going to feel heard if you're trying to pump your issue down my throat. Okay. Woo. The next style of defensiveness, I call it the implosion. And the implosion is where it's almost as though somebody's self-esteem bubble pops. So as soon as we get close, they're just like, oh, I'm such a horrible person, I knew it. And they skunk it up, man. They create such, it's like, whoa, back off that person, right? Don't share anything with them. And, and, and so that internal shame story just, just blows up and people just begin to back off. You know, there's some people walking around that there's some great information for them, but they'll never hear it because they don't have the courage to say, I'm human. I just need to hear some feedback. All right, the last one is explanation. And this is for all the rational people. Do I have some rational people in the world? Yeah, yeah. Anybody admit they're emotional? I'm on the emotional side. So we got some emotional people and then we got some rational people. All right, well, this one is what the rational people do. So the emotional person is, you know, they're going at it, and the rational person is, well, I did that because, and they just blah, 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 blah. And then they usually end with something like, because you, and it was so logical. Like, it just made so much sense. I'm like, man, I did that to myself. How, what in the world, you know? Like everything I got wrong in this relationship is my fault, you know? That's the explanation. And can I just say, some people are so hell-bent on avoiding responsibility, they're like Neo in the Matrix. They're just, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. you got nothing can stick to me, baby. Nothing. Man, you got nothing. Come on. All right, I'm going to tell you a story. Woo. So back in the day, before railroad crossings were automated, they used to have a shack. And this little shack would sit next to the, the road. And, and, and the responsibility was there would be a train operator there, and they would warn people by swinging a lantern, hey, there's a train in the tracks. And one night, there was an awful accident. And a young mom and her children just ran their car right into the train. And, uh, of course, the car was decimated and their lives were lost. And as we do with every tragedy, we want to find out who's to blame. And so they decided they would haul the train operator into the courtroom. And the prosecutor began to ask him questions. Did you know you were scheduled to work that night? Yes. Yes, I knew I was supposed to work that night. 
Did you show up for your shift that night? Yes, I was there. Did you know that there was a train? Yes, I knew there was a train. In fact, it was the Santa Fe going to here, had so many cars, it was carrying this load. Clearly the guy knew that the train was there. Were you awake? Yes, I was awake. Did you see the car coming towards the tracks? Yes, I saw the car. And uh, did you get your lantern? Yes. Did you stand at the appropriate place next to the road and swing your lantern? And the person says, yes. And the prosecutor looked at the judge and said, oh, no more questions. And so the judge looked at the man and said, well, you're free to go. So as the man made his way off the, the stand, down the aisle, he mumbled under his breath, I'm so glad they didn't ask if I had lit the lantern. And can I tell you, sometimes all that would be needed to heal a relationship is somebody to accept responsibility. To just say, you know what? You're right. I blew it. I am sorry. I shouldn't have done that. So instead of trying to defend and keep everything from sticking to us, in James chapter 5, verse 16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Anybody want to be healed? And we want to be healed. We want our relationships to be healed. And can I just tell you that there is rugs that aren't big enough to sweep things under sometimes. We have this mantra, oh, we just need to start over. We just need to start over. I'll just, just forget about that. That was yesterday. Let's, let's just be future focused. But do you know that things that hurt, hurt? They hurt. There is no way to make up emotion. I, uh, my mind is working here, trying to spit it out. Um, do you realize there's no emotional economy for emotional wounds? Right? You, you, it, it, it's hard to say, hey, you know, if, if someone wrecked my car, well, we could go out and we could determine how much the car is and you could pay that amount of money off. There, there's, a, there's a value. But how do you determine how many emotional dollars are owed? Right, how, how do you do that? Like, you know, I once had a couple, and this is a true story, that she said, if you ever do that again, you're gonna have to paint the living room. And the next time he came in, he says, yeah, I'm about halfway up, about right here. But I wish there were ways, but sometimes we are trying to inflict penance on people, right? We're trying to get them to pay for an emotional wound that only God can heal. And the way that God heals it is by us standing and saying, you know what? I'm a human. I blew it. I messed up. And, uh, and so the point there is let others in your story. I'm gonna just share a, so in this process in the last seven and a half years, we came to this church with one word that uh, we were supposed to do something with marriages, but we didn't know how that was gonna all work out. Yes, we were already licensed marriage and family therapists, but we weren't working in, the, uh, in that space. In fact, I was working for the Navy. Spent three and a half years working, anybody in the Navy? Come on, worked, was working at the Fleet and Family Service Center and uh, spent three and a half years there. And then I worked with the Marines, the Marine Corps and uh, at Miramar and uh, come on now. And, uh, <laughs> and so I was, I was working for the Marines and then I was building a private practice. I felt like God had given us this dream to, to build a, a practice. And, uh, but I'm telling you, some things, Colin and Melissa, seven years to an overnight success, come on. It takes a long time for dreams to mature. And so it was at this moment I had an opportunity to quit the day job because I was realizing I just didn't have enough hours and I had an opportunity to work overnights on the suicide hotline on the weekends. And so Friday nights at 6 p.m., I was driving to work, everybody else was getting off, and I would get off Monday morning uh, at like seven. And this was a hard, hard time. And uh, so later, my daughter has come up to me and said something that is one of the hardest things I've ever had to hear. During that time, it felt like I lost my dad. And I'm telling you, you know, part of your mind immediately wants to go, no, I was there. I was there on Monday between this time and this time. I took you to school. 
I don't know what you're talking about. I was there. But the truth was that for her, she had lost me. And here's the real truth is that I was a near zombie during that time. <laughs> there was a whole lot of times I was in real dark places and uh, felt really bad about my life. I joked at the last service, you know, enjoyed sitting in dark places, watching cage fighting, you know. <laughs> uh, you know, you, you get yourself on. And so here I was in these dark places and I was missing out on my daughter. And so after she told me that, we found out she had an open period and we started going to coffee with each other. And I would take her to King's Craft Coffee in Poway. Come on. And uh, we would meet there every week and just, just talk. And sometimes what needs to happen to heal a relationship is simply to say, I'm sorry. Come on. Hey, can I just say this? You don't lose your humanity when you make mistakes. You don't lose your humanity when you make mistakes. You're still a human. You still have the ability to have the inspiration of God, a word, some ability to change yourself. <clears throat> so what I wanna just say is a key here is that you've got to see yourself in the grace of God. We're not perfect and guess what? I'm so glad this church preaches it, but that's okay. <laughs> thank God, right? Come on, can somebody say amen to thanking God? We don't have to be perfect. Right, We got the grace of God that covers us. And so we have to stand in that place of forgiveness and we have to reject the shame story. The shame story that each one of us deals with is that if you really knew me, you wouldn't love me. And so we hide ourselves from each other. And that's the whole point is that when you let others in, invite people to speak into your life invite people. We, there's tremendous wisdom walking around, but sometimes we just have to invite people in. All right, we are wrapping this thing up. You guys good? You good? So here's the thing. I don't know where you are today, but it's possible that in some relationship you have found yourself acting instinctually or by internal cues and uh, you've been maybe behaving a little bit like an animal. Can I tell you there's hope for you today? Maybe you're a person who has been uh, critical and uh, you have used your words to attack other people. I'm just telling you that this is what's beautiful about being human is that that can change today, right? You, you literally can have God take your words and change the way you speak and learn to be discerning. And maybe you've been a person that you have been blocking people. <laughs> you don't want anybody to speak into your life. You don't want anybody to see your life. And maybe you're a person that says, today I can have the courage to let somebody in. Will you let me pray for you? Father, I just thank you that you have created us in your image. And what that means is we have the ability to have thought and to be inspired by your word. And so God, I just pray that you are faithful this morning to do what you have said you would do. I declare healing. There may be a relationship right now that is broken and we're speaking healing into those situations. God, we are gonna be a people who avoid criticism. We avoid defensiveness, God, but we're gonna be a, a people who are discerning and a people who are open to feedback. And so God, right now, I just pray a special blessing on every relationship that sits here. And we just thank you for what you're doing in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.